Hello everyone, welcome to a new time series and applied econometrics video tutorial. My name is Juan, today I'm going to be talking about the Hodrick Prescott filter in eViews. I would like to let you know that there is a link in the description of the video where you can visit my website to see all the available tutorials that I have in Stata, in eViews and Latex with Overleaf. Let's begin with an introduction of the Hodrick Prescott filter. So the HP filter is a smoothing method commonly used by macroeconomists to decompose a time series into trend and cyclical components. Although this filter has been around since the early 80s, it became widely popular by the end of the 90s after the paper written by Hodrick and Prescott in 1997 entitled Postwar US Business Cycles and Empirical Investigation. For you to have an idea, then what we are doing with the HP filter is decomposing the series YT into a trend and cyclical components. The trend may not be stationary, it can contain a stochastic or deterministic trend, however the cyclical component is going to be stationary. The cyclical component is calculated as a difference between the actual series and the trend. Without getting into deep details, let's go with an overview of the HP filter. So what the filter is doing is computing the trend of the series YT by minimizing the variance of yt around the trend. The first term is going to be the square differences between the actual output and the trend. This is basically a distance of the trend from data. The second term is going to be the squares of the trend components second differences. It's the smoothness of the trend. Lambda is a smoothing parameter and can only take positive values. The larger the value of lambda, the smaller is going to be the volatility of the trend. The filter assumes a linear growth of the series, so you will need to apply logs in the case you are working with GDP or other series such as CPI. The values assigned to lambda are 14,400 for monthly data, 1,600 for quarterly data, and 100 for yearly data. Let's take a look at an example. I have applied the HP filter to the real GDP for USA so I was able to decompose the series into trend and cyclical components. What you are seeing in this slide is the trend. You can see the trend in the blue line, which is showing the long run behavior of the series. And in orange, what you can see is the actual GDP. As you can observe, there are periods where the GDP is above the trend, and there are periods where the GDP is below the trend. So that's basically what we call the cycles or the gap, and is times where, for example, if the GDP gap is positive, like in this case, you're going to have a period of expansion of the output or the economy. And when there are periods where the GDP is below the trend, like it's in this case, then those are going to be periods of contraction in the economy. Let's take a look at the cyclical component. Here you can see the percentage deviation from trend. And basically all these points that you are seeing here, all these troughs, these are points where the economy has contracted. Here you can see, for example, COVID. You can see the 2008 crisis. And then you have periods of expansion as well. So all these periods that are above the zero axis line are periods where the economy has expanded above its trend, where when it's below, then those are periods where the series was below the long run trend. Now let's go into views. I'm going to show you how to decompose a series into trend and cyclical components using the HP filter. We are in views. I have here the GDP for USA. It's data that goes from the year 1960 to 2021 and it's quarterly data. So the first thing we need to do with GDP is, as I mentioned before, apply logs. So I'm going to click generate. I'm going to first give the new name of the variable. I would like to call it, for example, log underscore GDP equals, and then all you need to type is log open parenthesis and the name of the variable, in this case is GDP. And I'm going to multiply this times 100, so then I get the, cy the cyclical components in the percentage term. So I'm going to hit OK. And here we get the variable now that it's called log GDP. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to double click on the variable. I'm going to go into proc 
and then I'm going to look for the option Hodrick Prescott filter. We're going to select this option and here now this box appears. The output series is telling us how we want to call the new series for the for the trend and also for the cycle. So for the trend we can just call it y underscore trend and then if you don't give here a name then eViews is not going to generate the cyclical component. So let's give a name y and then just type cycle. For the smoothing parameter as you know we have covered this in the slides because we are using quarterly data we are going to be using the value 1600. We hit OK and here we get the graph. You can see that the value of lambda in parentheses is showing 1600. That's the option that we have used. On top, we get the actual series with the trend, and below, we are getting the cyclical component. Now, I'm going to show you how to display the information of these variables separately. We're going to close this window, and here we can see that the new series have been created the cycle and the trend. We can open the cycle, go into view, go into graph. And now we can click, this is optional, you don't need to do this. I'm going to just select a template and I'm going to use the option simple just because that type of template looks better. I'm going to type OK. And here we are getting the percentage deviation from trend. Of course, you can edit this. You can double click in here and type percentage deviation from trend. There we go. And here we get the new title. Now I'm going to show you how to display the trend with your actual GDP. We are going to close this window in here. We put close and now I'm going to open the log of GDP with the trend. We're going to select both at the same time. Select open as a group. Then we're going to go into the option view, a graph. And then I'm going to select the template again. As I just mentioned, it's optional. You don't need to do this. You can just select OK and that's going to be all and here we get the graph so you can see in orange we are getting the trend which is showing the long run behavior of the series and then in blue we are getting the actual GDP we can assign a title to the graph we right click and select the option add text then we're going to go in the option center we're going to select position we would like it above center and we can put real GDP and then we can put actual and then trend and there we go we get the title you can just freeze if you want this and then you can give it a name you can put it for example trend and actual that's all we can close and here now I'm going to show you how it's going to appear the graph in here you can double click it and there we go so that's going to be all for today i hope you found this video useful and i hope you understand how to use the hp filter in a time series and i would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you would like to get more content related to apply time series and forecasting thank you very much for watching and take care Thank you.